Hey guys, so today let's talk about making reads last longer. And the first thing I wanna say is this is a community, right? So we've got a bunch of professional level saxophonists that watch this channel. So if you have any tricks that work really well for you, let's go ahead and talk about them in the comments below. Leave us a comment down there and let's get some dialogue going because I'm always super open to great tricks for making reads last longer. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like if you haven't already. And of course, thanks for watching as always. So recently I went through a stretch of about 60 shows where I played the same read for every performance. Now, of course I had some other reads that I was rotating through during that time and practicing on and stuff, but I kept on coming back to that same read for the shows. It just felt so good and lasted so long. So I thought, you know, some of the tricks that I used to make that read last long would go nicely in a video. I don't know if any of these ideas are necessarily revolutionary, but the nice thing about these tricks that I've used over the years are that there are things that anybody can do without a lot of trial and error, so to speak. I've never been into using read tools personally. I know that works really well for a lot of you, but all of these tricks are just things that anyone can do and anyone can learn very quickly. And before we get started real quick, if you wanna try out Nexus saxophone reads, if you haven't already tried them, or if you wanna restock on them, if you've been digging them already, we're running a deal this week where you can get 15% off of your read orders with the coupon code in the video video and description below. And that discount code also applies to the new Nexus saxophone read case. So again, if you haven't tried this stuff already, it's a good time to get in there and try it while the code still lasts. So the first way to make your reads last longer is to break the reads in properly. It's important to break a read in and give it a chance the first time you play it. Sometimes what ends up being a very good read doesn't necessarily play that well in the first few minutes. But it's important to note that the first time you play a read, it's actually going to hold the moisture in far more on that initial play. So you should actually only play the read for 10, 15 minutes max. Otherwise you run the risk of the read becoming super waterlogged. And if the read does become waterlogged, it is going to play like mush for a while. One workaround that you can do if the read really becomes way too waterlogged is you can actually blow dry it with a hair dryer. For that, I would recommend using a low power function on the hair dryer and not getting too close to the read and doing it you know, gradually, you don't wanna do it over a few seconds, just, you know, that might take a little bit of trial and error, but that is a last resort if your read becomes way too waterlogged. Say you leave it soaking in, in water for like an hour or something like that, cause you forget about it. That is something that you can do to, uh, you know, temper the moisture in there. All right, the second trick to make a read last longer is to play the read every day. Even if it's just for a few minutes, when you play the read every day, it's literally forming to the mouthpiece more and more and providing a better and better seal with the mouthpiece. If you don't play the read every day, it does run the risk of warping, which can make the read effectively softer by it losing strength and structure at the tip of the reed. If it warps, it will also definitely make the reed lose its seal on the mouthpiece. To test whether a reed is sealing on the mouthpiece, what you can do is a reed sealing test, I guess you could call it. And so what you wanna do to test the seal of a reed is just put your palm on the back of the mouthpiece and then just suck in from the reed at the tip of the mouthpiece. And so what we see in here there is that the reed does stay sealed to the mouthpiece for a second and then makes that popping noise. If the reed was not sealing well to the mouthpiece, it, you would not get that suction that happens for a second there. So again, this end of the mouthpiece, we want to be completely sealed. And here we're gonna have the suction. As you suck on the mouthpiece, there's gonna be that second of suction before that popping noise. Now, the third way to make a reed last longer that we're gonna talk about today is using a reed case. And I was probably the last person on earth or the last saxophonist on earth to realize how effective this can really be. I had never bothered to use a reed case my whole life. I would actually just always use these little plastic reed savers that would come you know, with the reeds themselves in the box. And you know, so I would just play the reeds and put it back in the reed saver. And what I didn't realize is that when you do that, it's much more likely that the reed does become warped. Also those reed savers tend to not keep enough moisture in the reed. Whereas if you're using a reed case, that moisture is typically going to stay at a really nice level. So recently Jack designed this Nexus saxophones reed case. And you know, I, I just thought it looked cool. It was a nice hardwood case and has a nice magnetic strip and, and you know, a, a beautiful you know, glass surface that you put the reeds on. Uh, I didn't think I was necessarily gonna use it that much, but I tried it out and I, again, I didn't realize how much using a reed case really helps um, with keeping the reed at a proper moisture. And I found that the reeds were warping way less. And over the last few months, 
of a bunch of intense touring it ended up helping a lot now of course there are a bunch of different reed cases out and i'm sure they're all great with tons of different brands so no need to you know use this nexus saxophones reed case but i can say that using a reed case in general has been really beneficial for me and uh, if you haven't tried it already again i was probably the last person to ever figure this out but if you haven't tried it already make sure to do that it helps a lot with making the reeds last so the fourth way to make a reed last does touch on the benefits of using the reed case that is going to be controlling the humidity of the reeds and i do find that takes a bit of trial and error if you're living or traveling through a climate that is particularly humid you're going to want to let the reeds kind of dry off a little bit outside of the case before you put them in if you're living or traveling through an area that is particularly dry you can probably just put the reeds right into the case also you're probably going to want to soak your reeds a lot more in a drier climate and vice versa for a more humid climate you're going to want to soak your reeds less often and for a, a shorter duration of time now there are humidity packets that you can get from certain saxophone companies that have this sort of thing for me i used one years ago my reeds ended up getting a bit moldy i probably used a packet that was just too high you'll actually have different levels of humidity um, you know with the packets that you can use Again, I think this all takes trial and error. Whether you're using the packets or just going into the case, I think trial and error is, is really the best way to just get a sense of how you want to be doing it in the certain environments that you are playing in. But the greater point, just being aware of the humidity element with the reeds. And again, you don't want them to get totally waterlogged, but you also don't want them to get dry and warp. The fifth thing that's gonna help your reeds last longer is to clean the reed. Over time, if your reed starts to get moldy, you're not going to want to play it for obvious reasons. So cleaning the reed, you know, at least rinsing it with water can be really effective. A lot of people like using hydrogen peroxide. If you are going to do that, of course, use the safe kind and do not drink the hydrogen peroxide. But with that, what I usually do is just pour some hydrogen peroxide on it and then rinse off the reed after. Whatever you do to keep the reed clean uh, can really help over time so the bacteria doesn't build up on it and it's gonna make it easier to play the reed over a longer duration of time. Number six is don't practice a lot on your best reed. So when I was going through this stretch of touring where I, again, played almost 60 shows on the exact same reed, I was not practicing for more than five or 10 minutes a day on that reed. I was practicing on other reeds. Typically, I only play my best reed just for a few minutes before the show as part of my little warm up process. If it's a reed that you really love, you're only gonna need a few minutes to settle into it anyway. Number seven is going to be practice over tones and long tones. A huge part of getting a reed to vibrate well is what you are doing with your oral cavity. And so essentially how you're voicing through the saxophone. Practicing long tones is gonna to strengthen your embouchure and airstream, which is gonna help the reed vibrate more effectively. And practicing overtones is going to help your throat positioning and the general position of your oral cavity in order to voice the notes better. Number eight is reed location. A lot of people don't realize how huge of a difference it makes where the reed is located on the mouthpiece and specifically how high it is located on the tip. I find the best location for the reed is what we're showing you right here in this picture, just ever so slightly below the tip. The lower you put the reed, the faster it's going to respond. And the higher you put the reed on the mouthpiece, the slower it's going to respond, but it's gonna give you a little bit more fullness in the tone. So essentially, the higher you put it, it's gonna feel harder and the lower you put it, it's gonna feel softer. Adjusting the location of the reed does really make a huge difference, and especially as you're playing the reed over time, you might want to raise its location on the mouthpiece ever so slightly, the softer the reed gets. Number nine is gonna to be to brush your teeth before you play whenever you can. That's not always going to be convenient or possible necessarily, but as much as you can try to keep your mouth clean, even if you're just rinsing out with water, as much as you can try to keep your mouth clean before you play, that's going to help the reed not accumulate too much harmful bacteria over time. Number 10 is gonna be if you're finding that your reeds are barely lasting long at all, consider a harder reed or a larger tip opening of the mouthpiece. Some people like soft reeds with large tip openings. Some people like hard reeds with small tip openings. It's really just about finding what works best for you. I personally play on a 110 opening for my tenor Nexus Edge mouthpiece and I play on the Nexus two and a half reeds. Sometimes I play threes. I personally love how that feels for myself, but everyone is different. And I find it takes time to find something that you really like. Jack and I actually put almost two years into finalizing the mouthpiece and reed design to be something that I felt really, really good about. So I think if you put the time into experimenting with different equipment, it can be really worthwhile to find something that you love. 
A lot of companies have return policies, which will help you find a combination that works well for you. For instance, Nexus has a seven day return policy on all mouthpieces and saxophones. So that way you can get the equipment shipped to your door and try it out for a few days to make sure it's something that you really love before you commit to it. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video today. Hope you all learned something. And again, please make sure to leave comments in the comment section below to let us know what works well for you as far as read tricks go. We'd love to have some dialogue about that. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and click like on this video and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.